But I will tell you, I have a real hockey team. And this guy, Frank Vetrano, who we got from Florida at the trade mm-hmm. uh, right before the trade deadline, is unbelievable. Man. I went to Belport High School with a Frank Vetrano. Did you really? No. I mean, this guy's got five goals in seven games already. He's yeah. like on the Pavel Bory uh, pace that we uh, when we traded for Pavel Bory back in 2001, 2002. In 12 games, he had 20 points. He mm. had 12 goals and eight assists. And then his knee got hurt the next year, but he was like a goal-scoring phenom. And now, all of a sudden, I'm not saying that Frank Vetrano is as good as Pavel Bory is, but I'm just telling you, it's that kind of impact that he's having. And to do it the way that they did it last night in Pittsburgh on Ben Roethlisberger night That's of all right. night. Like, yeah. I needed that last night. Sure. <clears throat> I figured you know, maybe they put him on the fourth line or something <laughs> and line him up good. there with Brian Boyle. But he did look good last night, and uh, the Rangers looked great last night. And that that is a huge win for them. And it, it just goes to show you that Chris Drury has made some really terrific trades here without losing too much of, of the bigger assets that they have. And this kid, Braden Schneider, on defense is a terrific young player. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that Jeff Gordon, the previous GM, did here with John Davidson. John Davidson ended up getting a Panarin here. And they've, they've basically you know, built this team, and then Chris Drury went and tweaked this team in the offseason, and then again at the trading deadline. And I'm telling you, they're playing about as good as they've played uh, in the last five years. And uh, it looks good, man. It, they look fast. They look young. Uh, they look hungry. Uh, they're playing with a gritty attitude with the guys that they added. And I'm telling you, this is now all of a sudden it, it takes the – it looks like a really good, deep hockey playoff run team. It really does. And then they got great goaltending. So uh, you have all the, all the attributes of that. I don't know if they're as good as the Flames or the – uh, you know, the Wild. Oh, well, let's not start Denver. thinking about the, 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 the Western, Western Conference, Conference teams, now. But Come on. Let's not get too cocky. The teams you got to worry really? about are temp- you got to worry about Tampa. You got to worry about Carolina. Uh, Carolina, definitely. And Carolina lost one of their players last night. Could Florida. Be a significant industry. And Florida, who's been the best team, uh, you know, along with Carolina in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, let's, let's, let's worry about that first before you. But the problem uh, is you got, you know, you got Ovechkin and Backstrom and. Those guys down yeah, the in Washington. Penguins won't be a pushover either, even no, though they you beat them last night. Of course, night. that's what I'm saying. They're yeah. not going to be a pushover. So yeah. it never is. The 16 games are incredibly difficult to win in order to win the Stanley Cup. But I, I will say, as this team has been building all year long, uh, it's been a great, great regular season. It's been a fun regular season. You know, can't wait to go to the Garden Friday night for Islanders Rangers. No, oh, you'll and, be there. And you know, uh, my son-in-law played his eight hundredth game last night. I saw on Instagram. Yeah, that's right. So Dimitri congratulations, going with you? To Matt. Yep, Dimitri. Yep. So I said uh, congratulations to, to Matt on his eight hundredth, and I was just gl- glad it didn't come month Friday night. Yeah, all I was thinking about as I was going forty-five miles an hour on the LIE is how this was going to be the open too. I, said, I, I get well. Listen, we, I said, I'm we driving could, right we into could sit a here hockey and propeller. Take a hammer to our heads and talk about <laughs> Julius Randle not wanting to be here, wanting to be here. Here does you know whatever yeah I mean we all know something's got to change there I mean I, I don't know how obvious it is I mean I'm mean, how long have we been talking about this yeah I mean I guess the the new stuff yesterday was the rumblings that he uh, maybe wants out I mean it's something we didn't mention yesterday I said I mean he's acting as if he doesn't want to be here well fine um, but, you know then, so yeah, whatever uh, but, but it's not so easy to get rid of him. Um, so I wish it were, you know, I wish he hadn't signed that contract last year. I wish they were in a situation where it was very, very easy to move on from him. I mean, but I just, the, the fact that this guy's got any sort of beef with the organization is crazy to me. I think it's more, I, I would say it's not so much the organization as it is with the way that he's reacting to the fans reaction to Obi Toppin and to his play in particular. So, you know, he probably feels like he's not wanted here. You know, today's well, well, athlete. Why, very, though? Today's I mean, athlete. all Tom Thibodeau's well, done is had his back yeah. this entire year. He still plays him too many minutes. I mean, you know. The, you hear what you're saying? What? That's why. Oh, be, well, uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter what I say. You said he doesn't want to be wanted. The organization clearly wants him. They signed him to an extension. The coach still kisses his ass. Isn't Everyth- that what matters? Right, but everything went south, and he's played poorly this year. <clears throat> And you know he is he is the uh, uh, the eye of the public scorn and all the things you just said it does yeah the coach has got his back for sure because the coach has got to have his back because yeah. it's the NBA and even though the coach does have his back his body language and his attitude suck and it's and it is definitely a negative on the rest of the players on the team but just because the coach has his back and maybe Worldwide West does and. Um, Leon Rosa, I really don't know what Leon Rosa is doing, but I, I don't know. Uh, that doesn't matter. What matters is he's out on the basketball court. 
The fans are not happy with him. The fans are calling for his replacement in Obi Top, and they want to see athleticism. They want to see length. They want to see guys hustling back on defense and getting rebounds as opposed to, you know, throwing the ball away, uh, you know, getting in, into it with the officials, getting teed up, throwing the ball. Uh, you know, I mean, all these idiotic things that have gone on around him. That that's why he wants out of here because the fans now are on him. So well, let, let the- me ask you though, if you're right, so you play Julius Randle is like let's let's do a little uh, role play here, if you will. All right, I am Leon Rose. You're Julius Randle. Where you been? <laughs> I've been I've been hiding in my office, Julius. Okay. Uh, all right. So tell me what your problem is. Look, it's it, it's obvious that I'm not playing well. I'm not comfortable playing here at the Garden. The fans obviously don't want me here. Um, they want to see younger players. I, I you know, and but I know we why. want you here. Like the coach is playing you significant minutes, and we gave yeah. you a contract. I, so. Yeah, I understand. I said, but you got to, you got, we got to try to relieve this pressure. And you know, if you can find me a place to go and play, I, I, I'd, I'd really appreciate that because this obviously is not going well for me. It's just yeah. not. I mean, I is that is that reason enough to I'm telling force you, your way is, out? Like, yeah, honestly, yeah. I, 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 you got some fans on your ass. It's not some fans; it's the entire fan base. Well, unjustified, and, and, though, because okay, the way but, he's acting. I, yeah, but again, that that's the point. It's I I think they're past the point of no return in regards to you know where his mental state of mind is when it comes to playing in Madison Square Garden, and it's you know it's the anger issues. It's uh, the technical fouls. It's the body language. It's the lazy defense. It's everything. It's and it's the poor shooting. It's the turnovers. It's it's kind of like the the fire hydrant player on offense where you give him the ball and he just stands there and bounces it. And you know, I saw it the other night watching the game the other night. He missed that three point shot and it was a bad three point shot. After that, I saw a guy that was really didn't want to shoot anymore, but was more. Involved in the offense, getting the rebound and getting rid of the ball quickly and moving the ball down the, the down the basketball court is yeah. like he should be doing it. Mm-hmm. But he, in his mind, remember now, because of his success last year, because of his new contract coming into this year, he's the guy now that wants to shoot the, ba- the ball at the end of the game to try to win the game. And that hasn't worked out for him. No. And, you know, the thing about it is, like, everybody should have a chance to do that. You got. You should be hitting the open man. Yeah, I want Walt Frazier doing this back in the '60s and '70s. But Walt Frazier wasn't also like so selfish that he kept the ball and he always wanted to take the last shot. He would always find the open man. That team would always find the open man because that coach would always tell them, "Move the ball, move the ball, keep moving, keep your feet moving." You know, it's it wasn't nearly the amount of isolation that there is today. And he's not an isolation player. And I think teams are playing him differently. They're double teaming him more. And the next thing you know, there's these turnovers. Uh, And then, you know, when the turnover happens, you can see how frustrated he is, especially when he's playing in Madison Square Garden. I think away from home, he's a little bit more relaxed. But at Madison Square Garden right now, it's just, you can tell, Jay, we've been around here a long time. Mm. You know when a fan base turns on. Oh, yeah, no, it's over. It turned on like a Doberman. But let me let me ask you this. So that that's my point, uh, Leon Rose. Yeah, but now we've gotten to the point now where any old schlub can ask out. Like it used to be the top end players. Well, he's supposed to be a top end, but he's player. not. We know that. So the top end players could ask out and force themselves out. Like we saw with Anthony Davis. We saw with Kyrie Irving. We saw it back in the day when Dwight Howard was actually a good player with the Orlando Magic, the original Dwight Mayor, when that happened. But now we're getting Ben Simmons, who can't play in the playoffs and hasn't played in I don't know how long, forcing himself out. And now Julius Randle has had one of the worst seasons in recent memory, uh, actually coming off of what he did last year to this year. One of the worst turnarounds I've seen for a healthy guy, like, ever. And now he's forcing himself out? Is that where we're at at the NBA? Where does it stop? You you can blame Julius Randle all you want this morning. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say that the Knicks needed to get rid of him anyway. I'm like, from my perspective... The Knicks need to move him. They need to move on from him, and he's got to go find a better place to play, a better place where he feels more comfortable. Because right now, it is at an untenable situation where, you know, there's only about five or six games left to go in the season, and the fan base has turned on him. He knows it. He feels it. He sees it. We all see it. So I don't care whether or not he wants out. The Knicks, the Knicks need to move him out. Yeah. I mean, so what? I mean, if he wants out now because we all have been talking about the Knicks moving him out, that's the other thing, too, that we don't see. We don't see, 
you know, how he's attacked on social media. You know, at least we put our names and our voices to whatever criticism we're handling. So yeah, but we all. I mean, but I'm just telling you. It's but this not, is the way it is. Wants we react out, that's to what I, happens. If if he wants out, good for him because we have been calling for them to move him you out of here. Him, anyway. You want him? Yeah, you want him to leave. So it's not really his fault. I think it's just it's a constant pounding of negativity that has been hitting him for you know the last three months at least. I mean, and then his actions on the court enhance the criticism, the intensity of the criticism. And I don't blame him as a human being first, a basketball player second, feeling the way that he does uh, about the way that he's been treated. And if he does want out, if that is true, then he has every right to feel that way after the way he's played this year and the way he's been treated by the fan base and by the media here, including us. That's right. Very well said, Boomer. He wants out. We want him out. So get out. Boomer and Gio wow. on the See, fan. It's all about the delivery, G. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't say it like that. You gotta say, you know what, you probably need to go play somewhere else. We need to move on from you. Uh we have you need to be here. finished. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I just try to make a little bit of sense about it so I understand uh, yeah. exactly what needs to be done. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.